Hey, what's up, party people? Happy pre-tape SJU. Ooh-wee! It's going to be a good one, unless some news happens uh, today when we're being pre-taped, in which yeah. case, whoops. Uh, I'm here with Danielle and Eric. Uh, we're talking all about the freshest news Friday has to offer, and that is that it's uh, Agatha all along and forever in our hearts. Because <laughs> they've announced a, a variety exclusive um, that they are getting a spinoff. At least it's in development with the showrunner of WandaVision, and you got to think that that has a little more weight to it than just something else randomly in development. Because they've also signed Catherine Hahn to one of those long-term uh, Bucky Barnes deals. Um, I don't know exactly how many movies, but it does cross uh, MCU uh, film and television properties. So a, he, uh, get, securing the bag is Catherine Hahn, and I couldn't be happier for her. Uh, she's doing this. She's doing Knives Out too. Uh, the Hanassance has begun. Um, I'm, I'm tipping my hand to what I think, but, uh, you guys think this is good news? You guys excited for this? Um, yeah, I've seen a couple of people be like, well, I don't understand like where she's going to fit in and other stuff. Like I'm at this point, I do think that they have teams that make this stuff work. Um, I think that we've all been cautiously optimistic about some of these, but I love Catherine Hahn and she's one of those performers where it's like, if she's got like a major role in something, I'm going to watch it. Um, she's very good. She's very talented. I know whatever they give her, she's going to be able to handle it. And that character already has like a built-in kind of a tease of a backstory in the show about like the witch trials and all of that stuff. So I, there's a lot of really interesting places you can go with it. And uh, I don't, I, and I also don't mind if it winds up being one of those, you like her so much, we're redeeming a villain. I love a redeemed villain. <laughs> it's one of my favorite tropes. Make everyone Vegeta. <laughs> Um, or, uh, yeah, so we can basically, for me, confirm, uh, because she is appearing uh, in so many future installments, she's Mephisto, right? We're just going to call it right now? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep. Okay, deal. Uh, Eric, what's your what's your response? Yeah, I mean, look, I, I, I can't not be somewhat happy about this because, yeah, Catherine Hahn is great. Uh, and this is like the power of the MCU, right? Because Catherine Hahn has always been great, uh, almost always in supporting roles. And now she gets her own show, uh, you know, because of the MCU. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, it's just kind of fun how they can take, as we've talked about, any character and make them like a big, mm -hmm. uh, you know, mega famous popular thing. And Catherine is such a great performer. Uh, she it was so fun in WandaVision. Uh, I like that Jack Schaefer is going to stick around to guide this show because I really liked WandaVision. And my quibbles with it were mostly kind of based about the MCU, like things they had to kind of work in. And I think they'll have a lot of fun with uh, Agatha. I, I will say I'm the flip side of, I do have the the bigger concerns about, I'm like, oh, MCU, I hope you don't get into the pattern of either killing or redeeming all your good villains. <laughs> like, mm. I, do want, I do want some villains to remain villains who are great. Um, and But I also, I do like that these Disney Plus shows on the flip side can get weird, uh, as we saw with WandaVision and certainly with Loki, uh, and kind of do their own thing. And I think a show that's about Agatha will definitely be doing its own thing. So I have those, you know, trepidation in the larger scheme of things about the redemption of too many characters, but I can't, I can't argue too much with getting uh, an Agatha Harkness show. I mean, let me resolve your trepidation, Eric. Yeah. Uh, we were talking the other day about uh, Tales from the Crypt and how you were hoping yeah. that that would come back. Why not make her, you know, the horror version of Ooh, Uatu, a crypt keeper. And, and she <laughs> takes you down to the, she just does the an anthology show about the different uh, ooky and spooky Stories corners. Stories from the, the dark hold. She's like, yeah, the she's, dark yeah. hold oh, hello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, with the dark hold by the fire. I it's didn't fun. see you there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, I'm totally in. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that, I wonder how much of this is part of, you know, the master plan and how much of it is like, well, Jack Schaefer did a great job on WandaVision. We really like Catherine Hahn. Like, let's just maybe give them their own little corner of the MCU to play around in rather than working her into, you know, the next big bad. But we'll see. Maybe we'll come to eat these words in, in five or six years when she, as predicted, becomes Mephisto. That's the other route they could go. It's like, <laughs> and, oh, her body is a vessel. Now she's Mephisto. Uh, or she could out. be a musical. I mean, everyone loved that song. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, at the anthology show, you change this. You do like a remix version of it every time. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. You guys look go. and let, let me get Yeah. Oh, they'll definitely do that. Um, uh, let me get uh, Marvel geeky on you and be like, well, I got the Harkness. You know, she was originally the uh, the nanny to Franklin Richards, son of uh, Reed and Sue in the Fantastic Four. And since we know the Fantastic wow. Four are coming, yeah. if they want to tie that all in and have Agatha get involved there now that she'll what be a recurring. What a small world. Um, oh, my, my internet is just frozen. 
I'm not nope. sure if you can nope, still. Nope, nope, nope. No, it we hasn't. lost Eric. Oh, we lost Eric. <laughs> Gotcha. Okay, well, while we're doing that, I'm going to clean off my camera because I am in Barbara Walters' vision right now. <laughs> yes, okay, there we go. A little Vaseline on the lens, uh, smooth things out. We're on a holiday uh, early, baby. It's pre-K, <laughs> it's pre-K so, well, season. I feel like we should just keep going. It's fine. This is the SJU promise. Um, Absolutely. No, Eric, yeah. Eric will return in the SJU part two. <laughs> Okay, so the MCU is making uh, roughly 40, 50, 60 spinoffs uh, in various <laughs> stages of development at all time. So that got us thinking, um, Danielle, what I'd love to hear from you is what MCU spinoff that hasn't been announced yet do you think we're going to get? And then maybe pull one out of your bag of tricks uh, that you wish we could actually get in reality, uh, even though we probably won't. Uh, what do you got? <laughs> Okay, so for the thing I think we're going to get, and I don't know if it's going to be full on Young Avengers, but they spent a lot of time, which I'm happy that they did, they were telling a story, they spent a lot of time in um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier covering the story of Isaiah Bradley, which uh, the folks read the comics was covered in the the um, miniseries Truth, and then they brought it back, uh, they, they, like, a bunch of us who read this did not think it was actually going to be wind up being canon. Um, and then it did wind up being canon because in Young Avengers, then Elijah, like who I believe was the grandson that, that we saw in Falcon and Winter Soldier, spoiler alert, yeah. um, it, it winds up in the comics that the the blood of the Captain America is genetic. Um, and so he winds up oh, getting- Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> he winds up getting- well, That's we not how know. steroids work. <laughs> <laughs> like somehow it changed uh, the DNA or okay, something. Okay, yeah. All right, sure, it's common. And it yeah. skipped like some generations. And so Elijah does wind up having, and it's not like as much, but he winds up having like some of the stuff that a Captain America would have. And so he winds up adopting um, a character that is um, essentially a tribute to his granddad and then Steve becomes his mentor and blah, 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 blah. And okay. so I think that that would be a really, like, I think that that might be just because of how much time they spent on it. I wouldn't be surprised if that either comes in for that or if they're finally, if they are building up a Young Avengers, um, especially with having, another spoiler alert, um, having um, Wanda's kids in the in WandaVision because her kids grow up and become like you know, Avengers. So like if if and then they also have um and I can't think of her name right now um in Hawkeye and so it feels like they're building all of these Bishop, younger yeah. people Kate Bishop they're building all of these people um you know we've got um Ms. Mar like they're building up all of these younger characters. Miss America so has like been confirmed for uh, Doctor Miss America's too. been concerned exactly so it feels like they're eventually building to that as a spinoff. I don't know if they want to do it as a movie. I feel like it's going to start on TV because I think that they're going to not trust teenagers to open a movie. I think that they would want to keep that on TV. Yeah. No, you're right that there will have to uh, be a continual handoff if this is if Marvel stuff to continue because look, Chris Hemsworth can't stay in that shape forever. <laughs> um, Dave Bautista has already said like he's one more and done, and he's literally yeah. said like I'm not keeping this shape up. I am getting older. <laughs> yeah, it happens to all of us. Uh, and, and these these actors, like the main stay of Enders, I mean, we've already lost Robert Downey Jr. Not lost him, you know what I mean. Um, but when you get it, when you get into your fifties, and they're like, "All right, take your shirt off," it's gonna be like, "No, I'm good. I'm good." You know, here, uh, come here, uh, uh, Michael B. Jordan. Like, you take this one. Uh, yeah. Although, who knows how old he is too? I, I, no idea. Um, but that's Dead and crack. Yeah. <laughs> now I want to hear. You are now uh, given green light power at Disney+. Plus. Um, it's Danielle's world. We're all living in it. What is your MCU spinoff du jour? Um, I, I, I say this all the time. I honestly think that this would be a great like series. Because once we start getting into more MCU lore, and once we start getting into more, we're bringing in the Fantastic Four, we're bringing in all of these, these new characters, Moon Knight, blah, blah, blah. Once we start getting into this, we're going to need someone to hold our hands through it. So much like The Watcher, I think that we do a, um, a, a series that's like six episodes that funnily catches you up on the MCU starring Luis from Ant-Man. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's a no brainer. That's not, I, I, I was hoping it'd be weirder because that's just like a great solid idea. I'm, I'd be shocked if that doesn't actually happen at some point. 
even if it's just like three episodes where it's just like, here's everything you missed in the MCU, just to like catch you up after every phase ends and before the next phase begins, um, you know, leaving out the stuff that's still in theaters or the stuff they're still hoping to make money off of. But I just think that that would be a really smart choice um, because he, like the way that they do his flashbacks and stuff, I don't think it would be get old if you wound up doing it the right way. Even if you just use him as a bookend to be really funny in the beginning, funny in the middle, funny at the end, and he's not doing the whole thing the entire time. The problem is you have to get the actors to like get back on in that scene or whatever to do the, to, to flap their gums appropriately, right? I, I think that you could do it using not those actors. Like, oh, I think okay. that there's a, I think there's a clever way to do it where it's like, um, he's telling the story and then maybe the people around him become those people or something like that. Or, um, yeah, uh, Ryan O'Toole says he's playing them all or like other people are. I think that there's a way to do that because that's the part that's funny. Like, you don't want to just see clips. You want to see people actually reenacting this stuff. Um, I think it's funnier if it's like, say that there's kids on the playground and then they wind up doing it or like whatever situation he's in, whoever's there suddenly becomes the Avengers or whatever and starts telling the story. Nice. Ryan says they can get rud for a day or two. That's true. <laughs> you can always get rud for a day or two. I mean, it makes sense in an Ant-Man movie because you already got your rud. Um, already got your rud. But yeah, I think they'll do this or probably the like eh, the other idea is probably to give that to Deadpool to do the recaps and like the meta ness of it all, him and yeah. Korg or whatever. Uh, either way, we are going to be in need of serious Marvel catch-up videos, but that's our job. That's Stay off our turf. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> many ideas um uh, okay those are solid picks solid picks all around i will i will now give you mine and i will tell you this um everything i thought would be a good uh mcu spinoff is already in development they're making so many things yeah. with every character above galaga guy already is attached to something like i think so there was a i think there was a quote for, from executive producer victoria alonzo who's been there for, since the beginning she's one of like the marvel parliament that, uh, yeah, they're working on like 31 projects or something like that was the number she gave on right now in various levels of, of yeah. production and development. Mm. Here's what I think that will happen on a, on a long enough timeline. Um, and it wasn't a very good comic arc, but it was a fun premise is uh, Marvel 1602. You know, speaking of Agatha, going back to- Oh that, my uh, God, yes. Right, to witch yes, times yes, yes. and stuff like that, where you had like- Oh, Nicholas Fury, my master of spies. It was like, what if the, and not the MCU, uh, Marvel existed, uh, all those heroes in, uh, I think, Elizabethan England or something like that. And like Peter Parker's like a Shakespearean actor and Wolverine's in there doing something. Uh, 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 Daredevil's like a blind bard. And like, it's a great idea to do like Renfair Marvel. Why wouldn't they? They've done everything, uh, other version. This is um, the time to do it when everyone is super into D&D &D and all that stuff. I yeah. love 1602. It's a great series. Um, one of my favorites is when Peter Parker is like, huh, you know, some people can see like a bird and then some people can't see very well. I wonder if there's some sort of glass that we could put on that like makes us, it's like Peter Parker <laughs> invented glasses. All right. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that that's, it, it sold a crap ton of copies. It got- Well, it's um, no Gaiman, yeah. Yeah, it got a bunch more- um, uh, the chances to play in that world throughout the uh, throughout the comics runs and yeah like I think that they'll just start they always look back to the comics for like inspiration like the other one I was thinking of was um Armor Wars that whole uh, uh oh, saga yeah. but but they already kind of cannibalized that for mm -hmm. uh, Iron Man 2 which brings uh, me to like, Armor Wars Armor Wars Armor is Wars. announced with Rhodey yeah. and, and Ironheart and stuff like that yeah Right. So, which brings me to my, uh, the one that I hope we get, um, because they already cherry picked a lot of stuff for Iron Man 2 from that arc. So I just hope we get Justin Hammer and, uh, Ivan Vanko. I know he's allegedly dead at the end of Iron Man 2, but I think he was saved perhaps by his bird. And I think we need a Falcon Winter Soldier team up between Justin Hammer and Ivan Vanko, um, on the road. I don't think they even have anything to do with Tony Stark or even making armor anymore. It's like an Iron Man 3 will definitely piss off comic fans, but it's just a road trip with Mickey Rourke and Sam Rockwell. <laughs> so maybe like, have Chloe Zhao do it like Nomadland. <laughs> they're, just kind of, <laughs> they're just kind of driving in the car together, talking birds, dancing, uh, becoming friends, becoming frenemies, becoming lovers, becoming more and less. Uh, I, I just want to see those two people in a in, in a confined space for a miniseries. That's my never will happen MCU uh, spinoff. We 
should definitely mean, need more Justin Hammer. Like yeah. that is such a, Justin Hammer was such a compelling character. Um, and I want to see him with like a team of bad guys. Like I want him to have his own little henchman. I want him to go full on supervillain and not just corporate supervillain. Like yeah. I want that. Yeah, I think we need it. Um, uh, 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 Ryan says it's got to be from Rockwell's side because yeah, the people need it. Yes, I agree. And <laughs> I'll bet he's probably going to be in Armor Wars because he plays he, he plays a part I, in that. Yeah. And but instead, it's just going to be like, oh, did you know uh, uh, what Rhodey likes to do on his day off? I don't care. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> Rhodey's day off. Come on. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that'll be good too. Um, but uh, yeah, I think those are. Those are our ideas. And again, on a long enough timeline, all of these will be made. They got to start working in like Fantastic Four and X-Men, but I think that that will be reserved for cinemas. They're not going to drop Silver Surfer on you in a, in a Disney Plus uh, the animated series or something. I still don't know how they're going to drop Silver Surfer on anyone in the year 20, uh, 2022 of our Lord or whenever it yeah. comes out, 2023. But uh, God bless him, and I can't wait to see how they he do could, he, he could He could cut across a, a Guardian at some point, and they could be like, yeah. whoa, whatever. Um, <laughs> all right. That's true. For They've now. made weirder things work, but it's still like just a... Just a it's one of those things where it's literally like, what do the kids like right now? Superheroes and surfing. Yep. <laughs> it's always seemed like the weirdest character to me, but I know people love him. Can you Don't roster get... him up by 10%? <laughs> He's what all the kids are into. Um, <laughs> yeah. It... Wagwan. <laughs> Wagwan, eat me. The Silver Surfer. Oh, no. Um, I'd be. <laughs> Hi, Eric. Welcome back. Hi, Hi I've been in. I've been another part of the multiverse doing another just in show. time for our Rasta Silver Surfer impressions. <laughs> <laughs> I would have it no other way. Um, before we move on to fan questions of of shows past, um, give us just your rapid fire, maybe two sentences or less. Uh, spin off you think you'll get, and spin off you wish you had. Uh, let's see. Um, spin off. Uh, I I think we'll get. We were talking about this earlier that we kind of think they're going to do everyone right yep. <laughs> so uh mm -hmm. let me let me circle back to that because i know i had an idea that now i'm blanking on but the one i want and i know i've mentioned this before uh but now that these characters are back in play anything is possible so i want a, a darcy and trevor slattery show i want a, a team up between between darcy and trevor uh being silly being funny being snarky uh, and uh, now that this this year, uh, 2021 brought them back into the mix. Uh, so uh, that that is my 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 dream project. And now I'm trying to remember. I, oh oh, here's the one that I thought they they might do, uh, especially after this year. Wong. It seems like mm. he's getting so much attention. Uh, and you know Benedict Cumberbatch, you know, might not want to do a Disney Plus series. Uh, but you get Russell Wong to do it, very charismatic and fun guy on his own. He can go off. Where's he going? He's going through portals. He's got a fight club on the side. Yep. He's got secret yeah. pals on the side. Um, I That'd think uh, you have a, a wacky weekend with Wong, uh, and uh, that can be your uh, Disney Plus miniseries right there. Oh, That's true. Wong done. has a whole secret life, yeah. Easy. Oh, sold. All right. Well, um, check back here because uh, uh, that one's definitely going to happen as well. Um, nice pick here. And I like your uh, your, your pairing. Um, you missed my pairing of Sam Rockwell and Mickey Rourke again, just for a road trip um, of, of Vanko and, and Justin Hammer. And your and Trevor Slatterly and Darcy can just be on another road trip. And it's just a whole road trip averse of the MCU of just two side characters uh, on a uh, driving to Vegas together. Um, right. Oh, and by the way, I said Russell Wong, Benedict Wong. There's two different actors. There's two <laughs> Benedicts. One Let me fix, fix that. Fix what that. Are the odds uh, well, thanks everybody for watching this uh, this little pre-tape episode. Again, I hope nothing crazy broke on Monday. Uh, maybe we're talking about the, we should be talking about the Bond box office results. It made one hundred and sixty million dollars domestic. That's my prediction. That's a uh, good guess. I like that. <laughs> yeah, <it's not> bad. <laughs> with, with the holiday on Monday too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you 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 see how prescient I am. Uh, while we move on to some live chat questions uh, that we've been compiling. Uh, storing away like squirrels for the long winter um, from because this is not live. Uh, so we, I will ask you this, beginning with Levetta, Uh What's the best and worst film from your favorite actor? So I guess question one, who's your favorite actor? Question two, best. Question three, worst. Danielle, you got one? No. Okay. Um, Eric, you got one? <laughs> I, I got one. I got one only because I did glance that we were going to be doing this and 
I don't, it's so hard for me to name my favorite actor, right? Uh, there's so many actors I think are great, but I don't know if I have like, this is my favorite actor. Uh, so I just picked randomly an actor I really like that uh, I thought about for something else we're going to talk about possibly. Uh, so Willem Dafoe. I don't know. Is he my mm. favorite? I don't know, but he's great. Uh, he's always great in everything. Uh, so I figured I would name my favorite uh, would be The Florida Project. Uh, which was, you know, a very small movie he did, but yeah. it did get him an Oscar nomination, I believe, um, which is a great film, uh, you know, about- A these softer certain, Defoe. A so and that's the main thing, right? He played against type by playing uh, someone who wasn't at all a creep or weird or un unstable. You uh, had to put him was... next to a, a, a pedophile to make him look that way, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> but he is a very nice character to me, which is about the uh, very specific sort of lifestyle, but that I found fascinating about these- uh, families kind of living in the shadow of Disney World uh, at these like low rent motels and this little girl, this like four-year-old girl who lives at the, one of these motels and running around with her friends uh, and kind of not aware of just kind of like the life she's really living. And he is the the kindly landlord of the motel, or the, the manager, I should say, of the motel who is trying to like do the best he can. He can't really intervene in this kid's life, but he's kind of has like an eye on like, oh, I, I he he clearly feels sympathetic towards her and her plight. And he's great in it. And I yeah. was glad to see him in such a different role. And uh, that one, and I, and I love that movie. Uh, it's kind of one of my favorite uh, under the radar movies the past few years. Uh, so that's my that's the yeah. that's the best Defoe, uh, an yeah. unusual Defoe. Worst has got to be a movie I also recently watched. Uh, I think I mentioned on, uh, on a different episode that I recently rewatched this um, Speed Two Cruise Control. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, it's that's a pantheon of like worst sequels to good movies for sure. Easily, uh, and but the leeches, the leeches. I mean, look, Defoe memorable does you know he, he goes for it um he's introduced i think i mentioned how he's introduced the acting pretty normal on the defoe level uh but don't worry he's gonna get maniacal and scream and yell and turn out to be using leeches to try to help himself medically by the end of the movie but it's just such a bad movie it's such a terrible movie uh you know with other good actors in it uh blown defoe you know you understand why they hired him to be the villain is the mid 90s they're getting all these great character actors to play your villains uh, but there's no way Willem Dafoe or anyone can save this movie because it's an um, epically bad film. So that is my my worst Dafoe for you. Yep, solid. Um, now, Danielle, I'll, I'll buy you some more time because I, oh, I got my, it. I got, I got my picks. Oh, you got your picks. Okay. Yeah, I got what, it. Who you got? Who you got? Um, I'm like, so again, not like my favorite actor, but an actor that I love that I will watch in anything um, that I think is just the bee's knees and has never gotten the proper amount of kudos or flowers, Angela Bassett. Um, I love Angela Bassett, so incredibly talented. Um, she, again, I, I don't think that she's ever gotten the proper amount of her flowers. I hope that it happens soon. So best Angela Bassett movie for me, um, with a bullet, not even a doubt is what's love got to do with it. Um, what's love got to do with it is such an amazing, um, it's so good. It examines, uh, and obviously it's like fictionalized, but it examines the life of these two people and everything that Tina Turner has went through. Um, Angela Bassett got mega ripped for this and kind of just stayed that way. <laughs> and, uh, uh, nails the performances, nails all of the dramatic stuff. I have that movie memorized backwards and forwards. One of her best performances should have won an Oscar. Just straight up, no question, should have won an Oscar. There you go. Um, worst movie, and I still love this movie, <laughs> but I don't think anyone would argue with me that it is her worst movie. But I still love this movie. Vampire in Brooklyn. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it is uh, Eddie Murphy when he is still... Uh, uh, he, he has enough clout to just try things out. And so he does. And his whole thing is he's like, I'm a sexy vampire who's going to seduce this woman and then also do that thing where I play every role. Um, it's got uh, Kadeem Hardison, who most people know of as Dwayne Wayne from a different world, uh, plays his, um, his kind of sidekick servanty guy. It's not good, but it's fun, but it's not good. And it, it definitely is one of those ones where it's like, Angela, you don't have to do this. <laughs> this could have been anybody. <laughs> like you're, you're way too good for this. Um, no one was too good for uh, the eighties, nineties, Eddie Murphy. I mean, that's just like an automatic yes. Right. You say yes, because he's Eddie Murphy and you're like, well, 
you know, I, I, I believe that he was just getting up. Like he had just done Boomerang, which was, uh, I love that movie. It was great. Um, he had done some other ones, but I believe that when he did this, um, it was either right before or right after he had just done um, uh, The Nutty Professor. So it was still very much like- I think it, it was right before because Nutty Professor was kind of considered a mini comeback, you know? Yeah. Off of a Vampire couple of things. Brooklyn. <laughs> well, because he also had done Beverly Hills Cop 3. Yeah. And the, the funny thing about that era of Eddie Murphy, we're talking like early to mid nineties, is that the common refrain you'll hear from people who work with him in that era was he basically decided, I don't want to be, like he d- did not want to do comedy. So Beverly Hills Cop 3, they said it was, he pretty much wanted to do a straight action. And Wes Craven's like, Eddie wouldn't be funny like making Vampire in Brooklyn. Like we thought we were making a comedy, but he was not. He so. wanted to be sexy. Like that was what he wanted to do. And like even <sighs> in the movie Boomerang, he plays like the straight man and while yeah. everyone else is being funny around him. And it's like, no, Eddie, like you're cute, but you ain't that cute. <laughs> <laughs> you had to clump it up. <laughs> he got to clump it up. <laughs> got to clump it up. Um, but he did. He did like some funny, some funny different characters. And yeah, it's, I love that movie. Go watch it. It's not good. Yeah. Movie. Yeah um sometimes you got to clump it up yeah I, I know you want to party all the time but you have to clump um all right so uh i picked i mean look my favorite actor is jack nicholson but that's boring um you may have heard of him from such films as chinatown wolf uh wolf yeah that, that that's in there for the worst um my favorite movie of his is five easy pieces uh love that performance love that film um I think his worst film is his last film, How Did You Know, the, the James Brooks rom-com that he did, because you can see, you can see him take dip one toe into that Pacino, De Niro, post-peak slide into just doing, you know, uh, Pablum, just doing whatever, whoever will sign a check. And he's like, you know what? I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. I'm not doing anything I've else. made all the money. Yeah, I've made all the money. What's another zero in this bank account? Um, I'm done. And I respect the hell out of that for, for him, you know, hanging it up in the early 2000s when his contemporaries uh, have, have just kept going. And He's going. like, I, I don't want a Dunkachino my way to the end. <laughs> yeah. You can oh, see you him avoid see a, a Dunkachino. But I do have a, a, a more recent pick uh, uh, climbing up the board uh, for me, and I've talked about it before, is Paul Dano. Um, who I, I love him in a uh, personal favorite film of mine, Swiss Army Man. Yes, the farting corpse yes. movie. As he says, the first fart makes you uh, makes you laugh. The last fart makes you cry. And I, I agree with him on that. Um, and his worst film that he's in, though he's not terrible, is uh, Cowboys and Aliens. I think that was just a whiff for a million different reasons. Um, yeah, and one of those super disappointing because of all the people involved at, the, at that moment in time, you know, yeah. Favreau off Iron Man. Yeah, but there, I mean, he has a really low-key, impressive uh, filmography. I mean, he mm-hmm. he came on the scene with like mm-hmm. There Will Be Blood and Little or Little Miss Sunshine, Little and Miss then Sunshine. There Will Be Blood, which is great. And then he made a lot of crap that you probably haven't heard of and I haven't seen, but doesn't look good. <laughs> but then l- listen to this run that he's on right now. His most recent movies are Looper, Prisoners, Twelve Years a Slave, Swiss Army Man, Okja, and now The Batman. Like that's that's a good little yeah. little run of films right there. So I uh, I know it's weird to be like one to watch for someone who's now like probably forty, but he's uh, <laughs> but I, I like where I like where this kid's going, and uh, I've always been a fan uh, uh, since Little Miss Sunshine, and then obviously There Will Be Blood is a is an all timer. So day now. Day no. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he demands to be sung as he enters a room. Yeah. All right, Levetta, you got you got uh, your money's worth on that fan question. Let's do another one. Um, I think we should do. I really like this one. Matan Valensky asked uh, if Kubrick di- directed the moon landing. Of course, uh, who will direct the Mars landing? Who do you who do you book to do a convincing uh, 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 or on location uh, shot of of us landing on Mars? He's got to be Denny Villeneuve, right? Hmm. Okay. Villeneuve. Yeah. Yeah. He could do it. He could do it. I think he could do a good a good version of it. If anything else, it's going to be really compelling. Um, <laughs> it's going to make a great sequel to the moon landing. <laughs> Nothing else. Yeah. The moon landing is like interesting, but it's more of a cult classic. Whereas this is going to be like, wow. Uh, I, I want the moon landing to deliver it all, guys. I want it to be dramatic. I want it to be kind of spooky. Like maybe there's something mysterious going on there. We should be uh, concerned about but ultimately, I wanted to make me cry. So Mike Flanagan is directing my mm. my moon landing mm. to deliver <laughs> <laughs> the scary and the sad all together. But can he keep it, you know, keep it on the DL or is he too, you know, 
<laughs> is he is he too well connected? But we'll I guess have that... to, we'll have to be careful that he doesn't do like a big interview with Netflix geeked. Uh, yeah, to talk about it. But... Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. What I have like a wag the dog situation. No one's seen that movie. Don't know. Why uh, that come on, that's a classic. <laughs> um, yeah, mine is a. Um, uh, this is one that I think the the government should look into to actually make it happen. And that's you you team up uh, Macquarie and Tom Cruise because they'll make sure to do it for real. It's done. It, 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 there's no way he's going to uh, let you recreate Mars on Earth. No, he, want, he wants the real thing. He's going to be training starting now uh, to jump so high he hits Mars or or whatever Tom Cruise oh, yeah. does with his yeah. magic powers. Uh, it's great when Macquarie tells stories, like basically what you're saying, Spencer, of like, when they're like, okay, so how do we do the Halo drum scene? And then the, it, I'm just gonna says, do the halo jump. Yeah, Chris is like, oh, well, I should just do it. It would yeah. be better if I just do it. It's like, yeah. okay, I guess we're just doing it. So <laughs> here you go. No, no need to fake if you got Cruz. All right, and we end as always with um, uh, uh, shifting gears to food uh, slash pop culture. So Raynard City Update channel asks, uh, I, I'm fascinated by this one. If you were on the uh, Bake Off, I guess the Great American Bake Off, uh, what would be your show stopping cake? A really dish, I guess. Uh, something that comes out of an oven. How are, you, how are you winning the competition? Oh, that's a really good one. Um, so I make, see, I can't because it belongs to someone else and they changed the name. Um, I believe it's a Momofuku Milk Bar. Our oh, milk yeah. bar yeah. used to have this pie. I forget what they call it now. They call it like the Momofuku pie or something like that. It used to be called crack pie. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah, crack pie. I remember that. Because I think the idea is it's good as crack or either that or it's like the, the stuff you put on top of it. I, so one slice of that pie is very rich. And so for holidays, I make it into bars. Um, and so that would probably be something using that same recipe with probably, I don't know, some like candied sugar or something that like spins like a Ferris wheel or whatever, because I can't actually do like a crack pipe. That would be insensitive. <laughs> um, so, so something like that was like, oh, it's candy. It's delicious. But it would definitely be using that recipe because I could make the crap out of that. Either that or something banana pudding related. Those are like the best uh, desserts that I make. Yeah. <laughs> That's that, that's gonna be tough to beat, Eric. Uh, how are you in the in the See, bakery? Well, first, in, in realistically speaking, I can't do anything. <laughs> I can't bake at all. <laughs> uh, and I'm also bad at this question because I've never watched like Bake Off, and I don't know if there's anything I should be thinking about specifically. I'm just gonna be super basic here. Uh, uh, if you know me, if you follow me on social media, you know I'm basic and I love my pumpkin stuff every year, but mm. I also love peanut butter. Uh, mm. So I'm trying to think, is there something, I feel like those flavors could be complimentary. So, uh, you know, it's, it's tis the season, we're in Halloween season, I'm thinking, is there some sort of like pumpkin shaped cake? And there is a pumpkin flavor too, but there's also a peanut butter flavor and you intertwine them and mm. it can be delicious. Maybe you put a Jack Skellington on it. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm uh, I'm uh, just coming up with stuff off the bat here, but that's, that's my, my peanut butter pumpkin uh, delight. Uh, it will be the best thing ever. Yeah, Ryan and says I, uh, a yeah. peanut butter and pumpkin spice Chucky doll cake. Yeah, just build Chucky yes. out of fondant. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Eat yeah, Chucky. Chucky in there. Yeah, <laughs> yes. that'd be pretty impressive. You, or you can do layers of like peanut butter cookies crushed with like granola and like have that be your base. Mm. I have ideas. Yeah, she's got thoughts. Um, I, may need, I may need to talk to you about this. I'm going to brainstorm. <laughs> I don't know about, about showstopper here, but I make a good cookie, and it's a hybrid of a, uh, a gingerbread cookie and a snicker doodle, known oh. colloquially as the ginger doodle. So this is, it is what it sounds like. It's a, if you like both those cookies, ooh, together, they're trouble. They are, they are hot trouble. Um, I love gingerbread. That's like, I, I, that's like my favorite gingerbready like cinnamony stuff i like a lot more mm. than chocolate um personally so that plus a snickerdoodle oh man oh it, it, fall is here baby uh <laughs> have have that with a with a psl by your side and you're you're living um so i don't know if i can impress cool. those uh those uh brits who are very polite but nonetheless have very high standards i don't think i'm stopping any shows with that but uh do yourself a favor make yourself a ginger doodle tell me how it goes um <laughs> And that's uh, that's our show. I think uh, there's a lot. There's uh, some other good fan questions that we'll have to save the next time there's a holiday here domestically, because um, I want to get to ranking all the bonds and all the stuff like that. But I'm sure we'll be talking about that tomorrow slash four days from now on another episode of SJU. We Very have painted. commentaries tomorrow, so 48 hours from the moment that you're watching this, approximately closer to 96 <laughs> for us. I'll I'll put it in the description. We'll try it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll see you then. Have a great weekend last weekend. Bye. <laughs>